Welcome back, Death Toll Racing. We're doing Locker today. Uh, lock right Locker from Power Tracks that we got from Low Range Off Road. So this is the 1512 LR. This is the cheapest locker you can get in the back of these. Uh, when you see the pictures on Low Range Off Road, it, they look incomplete, and that's because you're actually reusing your outside spider gears as part of the locker. Uh, and don't knock that; it actually works quite well. So stay tuned. Let's get this thing in there. This is going to set you back about $280 plus gear oil and some gasket makers, gooby gasket, uh, as I like to call it in the shop. So let's jump right into it and get this thing installed. All right, we're going to just speed through uh, getting everything out. You can kind of just see everything that I have to take off. It's very easy to get it out. Um, the, my, my only advice on this one where you can make a mistake is one, uh, make sure your e-brakes off, your drums aren't going to come off. And then two, make sure you're supported by the frame, not by the axle on your jack stands. Uh, because the axle, when you take that diff out, you have to take off the upper track arm and it, it, it could spin on you and you could, you could fall off the jack stands. I'm going to move mine here uh, in just a second. Uh, I just did that because it was a little bit easier uh, at, at the time. So you see me right there, I'm using a slide hammer. You can get creative on how you gotta pop that axle out. Uh, the bearings are pretty tight though. So you'll, you'll have to come up with something, a way of using a slide hammer or something on it. Uh, there, there's a million different ways you can do it. I was just hooking uh, a, a different type of puller on it and then just kind of hooking it over the corner of the axle and popping it out of there. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, this already looks too involved for me. Uh, I don't want to do this. Um, but, but don't sweat it. Uh, I, I know that, you know, there's not a lot of guys that know how to set up ring and pinions. Uh, you don't have to. So all we have to do is just make sure this thing's in good shape the way it is because we don't want to you really bother with it if it's not. Uh, we can go to the wrecking yard and get a new one. Uh, this thing's in really good shape, so you want to see and make sure there's not too much play. You're going to feel a little bit by holding onto the input, rocking the ring gear back and forth, and you should just feel a little bit of clicking. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is obviously look at everything, make sure nothing's chipped. That's a very obvious one. Uh, and then run your finger along here and make sure that the gear isn't coming out and the, and the edge of the gears are real sharp. They'll start actually pushing. Uh, some the metal out so it'll feel real sharp around the outside edge uh, and if none of those things are the case everything feels good looks good uh, it's not going to smell good because they don't um, you're, you're good to go so what we have to do is take this carrier out and then take the ring gear off uh, and the case will split and if the ring gear gets stuck on there that's okay because we, we need to need to split it behind it there in this seam here um, and, and then we're going to replace those those spider gears with our lock rate locker. So to, for before we take it apart, though, we need to mark where everything is, uh, and it will be pretty much foolproof on taking it apart. You won't be able to put it back together and have that thing be a full turn out, uh, or it will either not go and you'll have to be trying to tighten it that way, or it'll be really, really loose and it'll be really obvious. So uh, it's very, very obvious uh, when, when you're getting off. One full rotation on this is a lot. So don't worry about that. So all we have to do is mark it uh, right where these tabs come down and lock it. Uh, we'll just mark those two spots and then as we take it apart we're going to make sure that this stays on this side and that one stays on that side and the same with these caps. You have to make sure those are machined uh, after they're bolted together and then machined so they're not inter interchangeable. They, they, will, they have to be on the side that they came off with. But other than that uh, you don't have to really sweat it. So let's, let's get marking it and then we'll take it apart and get those gears in there and then we just put it back together. We're almost done. All right, so before you mark it, make sure uh, that no one has, if, if these have ever been taken apart before and put a new ring and pinion in there, make sure that no one has marked it already because uh, that, that could uh, lead you a little astray. But I'm just going to use a little center punch and I'm just going to put a little dot right next to the one it goes to. There we go. Now we'll just take these guys off.
All right, so this I have this upside down, but I'm still going to call it left and right as I look at it. It's really the only way this diff sits uh, nicely is upside down. So uh, we'll just make sure that we're always doing it that same way in case we end up rolling this thing around for some reason. Keep the bearings on the right sides as well. Okay. You can't put it in backwards, so don't worry about anything like that. So they appeared to have used blue Loctite on these in the factory. So we'll probably do that again. So that was like that. And there, we're actually gonna reuse those, so don't lose those. Now we have to take out our Sparty gear assembly. My favorite roll pin removers and installers. So if you have a parts washer, you could parts wash it now if you wanted. Okay, so since this is a budget build, we bought the locker that does not replace these side gears, uh, and that saves you a little bit of money, and so I'll show you how this works without them. I haven't actually used one of these probably in 20 years, and uh, they don't look like they've changed. I've never done it in, a, in a, uh, one of these guys before, though. All right, so I got this figured out. So what you do here, we do end up using this block again. We also end up using basically everything except these gears, these, these little guys. Um, and then you won't be using those because there's nothing actually to be pushing up against them. Okay, so what you do, put your spacer in, put your block down. Oh, sorry, don't put your block down. Put this guy down. I guess either way. Line up the holes, doesn't matter which ones, and then put your block in. This block appears to be 100% symmetrical, so you shouldn't, shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, and then, when you're putting the pins back in, so remember there was only three roll pins, the long pin goes through the holes with only one. Like that. And just line up the hole as good as you can, and then you can actually drive that back in. Now you put in your little stubby guys. Okay, so now we do our springs and stuff. Springs and pins. So you should have four of each of everything. Four of the little springs, four of the big springs. Okay, so the easiest thing to remember, if I'm remembering how to do this correctly, put the pins in the round holes. pins in the round holes, and then springs in the oval holes. And they just go, the little spring goes inside the big spring, and then just put that down in the oval hole. Oops, making sure they stay together. There we go.
put the springs in the oval holes and the pins in the round holes like that and then the little trick because petroleum jelly will dissolve in the in the gear oil uh, if you some guys will use grease uh, and grease is okay, but it, it kind of ends up making a little bit more of a science experiment uh, than the petroleum jelly does. This literally just dissolves as soon as that, it just becomes part of the oil, as soon as that does. And then that'll hold it. So now you, have, now you can actually get this thing in there. Uh, so now, obviously, you know, it's only going to fit one way, but the pins go on the springs, and then the springs go on the pins. So there's going to be some preload like that. Uh, and then drop that guy in there. That's that shim washer that they gave you. Um, and then you put this half on. Oops, let's try not to have that happen. Like that. And that's it. Now, we didn't, now we're just gonna start putting it back together. You shouldn't have any extra parts. They don't give you extras. All right, so I'm just gonna brake clean these so that the Loctite, the blue Loctite works as good as, as it can. All right, blue Loctite, don't use red. The factory used blue. Uh, and do yourself a favor and don't use red because you could screw up the threads and stuff, taking them apart if you don't do it right. And you don't need to make it that difficult to get apart because odds are you are gonna be taking this apart again eventually. That is one of the drawbacks to using these style lockers is those pins could eventually shear. Uh, depending on what type of driving you're in, but if you're out playing with it, of course, uh, you're going to be harder on it than just a daily driver type of thing. Okay. Now, before you tighten any of them, get them all started. Alright, so if you're going to do it my way and not torque them, go around them a whole bunch. Do the, the star where I, I just went like this because it's the easiest to keep track of. Or go this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Uh, that's the easiest to keep track of and then I just go around them a few times just to make sure uh, that everything's down. Um, and that should be good. Um, uh, that's going to be just fine, especially for this thing. Uh, it's everything's already been mated together before, so I'm not super worried about it. So now we're just going to put this back together. So. Make sure you get the bearings and stuff on the right side. Just go ahead and get it in there. And then now, so that you can do a number of things. I like to actually get this cap uh, on their finger tight before, oops, helps put it on there right away. Uh, before I thread that in there and that way you ensure that you don't cross thread it. A lot of guys will stick it on there and then stick the cap on uh, and try to line up the threads and sometimes it'll actually be crossed and then when they adjust it and everything's good and they tighten it down it actually cross the threads so, so it strips threads out. So I'm just going to spin it in with this. All right, so here I'm just going to tighten them up. So these these things have lock washers on the uh, on the bolts on the caps. So just just tighten them up so that there's pressure on the lock washer, but don't tighten any any more than that for right now until we get it the rest of the way together. All right, so be patient getting these started. Don't force them in. They should thread very very easily. Uh, you may need to loosen the bolts up just a little bit on the caps uh, to get them started. But once you get them started, they should spin really easy. I think that's about where it's going to be. Yep, I still have my play. So now this side, as soon as we kind of get it close, it should be, the dot should be about where we want it. And there it is. So it's right there. So I just got to move it three holes. So I, I just use my little roll pin driver, that spring punch. That thing works really good for just, just working those around. 
Uh, obviously, it's not hitting them very hard. It's just it's just very slowly working it around, uh, precisely, I should say. Okay, now that I have those where I want it, before we do anything else. Now let's make sure it feels right. It should feel exactly like it did before with just that little bit of play. Just to ensure you got it back together the right way. And you should have no play side to side. There shouldn't have been play side to side before either. So it feels, feels just like it did. So that means we did good. So now you just put your lock tab on. But before we tighten those, I'm going to tighten these up real So now you should have all these left over and all four of those left over. That's what you should have left over. Very cool. Let's put it back in. All right, I'm using right stuff. It actually works amazingly well. That is that. So if you're not lifted, you're not going to have that block. Um, eventually, we're going to make a up, new upper track arm if we can't find one. I don't know if anyone makes one or not. Um, I don't like this block. It's, it's not the best idea in the world because that's what's keeping your in, rear end from twisting as you're crawling over rocks and stuff. And now you've got a spacer with a bolt, so it basically has a lever. Uh, so those bolts are, poss are quite possibly uh, gonna break uh, at some point maybe they never will um, but I don't like the idea of doing stuff like that but it is what it is but that's our that's our third link up there so that's the only thing holding the rear end from twisting all right now going back together is is pretty easy I'm putting a, a gasket maker between all the parts that go together there there's not usually one from the factory technically oil shouldn't leak out of there but we're doing this I, as, as I go I try to make everything as waterproof as I can uh, just in case we ever do any water crossings. Uh, but otherwise, it just goes together just like it came apart. Very, very easy. Okay, so if your brakes, if you had a hell of a time getting your drum off, this is how the adjusters work on these trackers. So you see a little gnarled piece there and then the tooth there? Uh, that takes up the slack. Uh, so if that piston has to push a really, really long ways, uh, th this will just ratchet in and it'll kind of hold the pad out, out to that far. So that's how they adjust. So it's actually a pretty clever little design. Uh, and then I go back and forth and whether you should lube those or not. Um, but I, uh, my theory is kind of don't because otherwise they, uh, the teeth on them, this is my theory, I haven't actually experienced it, but if you, spray this with lube or put lube on it, all the dust will stick to the lube and I think it'll probably smooth over those teeth with, with grit uh, and the adjuster won't work anymore. So I think that you want to just leave those kind of dry uh, as a dry type of lube. All right, we're almost done. Now we just gotta put the drive line in. All right, guys, now all we gotta do is test it. So we are going to be taking this thing out to the ORV park again and trying to make it up the hill that we could not make it up. 
uh, and also test it out in some other areas uh, very soon. So we have a couple more upgrades to do. We got skid plates put on it. We got header and exhaust put on it. Uh, the header is on it now, but we are still waiting on some parts to finish the exhaust. And those will be coming out soon. Uh, and then we also have some Safari video videos coming out. We got a dyno video, uh, and then we have sway bars that, we, that we're going to be putting on it. Uh, so those videos will be coming out soon. I'm not sure in which order. Uh, but anyway, let's test out this locker, uh, and we will see you again real soon.